I'm Teresa, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing something that may be completely stupid but you know what, it seemed like a good idea at the time so hopefully it turns out fun. I'm going to be reading just the first couple pages of the Scots edition of Harry Potter because if you can't tell I am Scottish and I just, I just wanted to read it. <laughs> To be honest, um, in Scotland, we don't all have just like one accent or one, even one dialect. So I know that a lot of this will make sense to me, but also a lot of it won't because it's Scots language and I don't speak Scots language, but it's so similar to the dialect of my region that I can get by, <laughs> if that makes sense. So the issue with this video is that it may make sense to me, but it probably won't make sense to the majority of the people watching it. So it'll be fun, <laughs> for me at least. So yes, the first about three pages um, are available online for free, so I'm reading those and then if people like this, if you want to see more, then I might buy the full book. Um, it's it's quite cheap, I just didn't want to commit to it, <laughs> especially if I could get all I would have been reading anyway for free. Yeah, so it's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stain. <laughs> and yeah, I'll just read it. So, chap- well, not even chapter. Cheap terrain. <laughs> the laddie wa lived wa. Right, st straight off. I've, I have skimmed over this before and the wa I just I do not like because I would not use it. It doesn't seem right. And further disclaimer, pronunciation won't be on point. Do not take this as how to speak <laughs> Scots language because it is not. <laughs> okay. Mr and Mrs Dursley, when I'm our private loan, were proud to say that they're a guy normal, thank you very much. There were less folk you would jaloose would be tangled up with yonihin unco or weird because they just didn't they hod wee havers like yon. <laughs> I don't know why, but I find this the funniest thing. I'm just not used to seeing Scots written in such a like formal setting, a proper setting that's not just people on Twitter or like family messaging and things. And like, we didn't speak like this, Scots language is like what Robbie Burns used several centuries ago in his poetry and obviously other people at the time. But like, that's the only time I, that's the only place I know Scottish language from. So <laughs> this is fun. Um, yes. Okay. Mr Dursley was the heated bummer, <laughs> heated bummer. <laughs> Oh, a firm called. Oh, fucking hell, I cannot read this. Mr. Dursley was the heat of a mark, or oh, a firm called Grunnings, that made trills. He was a muckle beefy booket man, wee a stumpy wee craggy, although he did. Hey, a guy muckle mouser. <laughs> Mrs. Dursley was a skinny mullinky. <laughs> I never thought I'd see skinny mullinky in a book. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Mrs. Dursley was a skinny malinky, blonde heated woman whose craigie was just about twice as long as other folks, which was a offy hundy <laughs> as she spent same uncle time kicking over garden garden fences, nibbing at the neighbours. The Dursleys had a wee son called Dudley, and to them there was na a braw laddie in the hale world. The Dursleys had often they wanted, but as weel as hain often they had a secret and their worst fear was that somebody would never do it. They didn't think they could thole it if only anybody found out about the Potters. Mrs Potter was Mrs Dursley's sister, but the ain had na seen the other in a long time, in a long while, sorry. <laughs> to tell the truth, Mrs Dursley pretended she didn't have a sister, because her sister and yon numpty a husband of hers. <laughs> Yon numpty a husband. Love it. Yon may be my favourite word. I, I 
probably couldn't use it in a sentence, but it, I just find it so funny for no reason. So yes. <laughs> because her sister and your nuptial husband of hers were as undursley-ish as it was possible to be. The Dursleys were feared to think what the neighbours would say if the Potters ever showed up on in their street. The Dursleys kent that the Potters had a wee son as wheel, but they hadn't ever seen him. This laddie was another good reason for keeping the Potters a while. They didn't want Dudley hain on him today we a bairn like that, Ian. When Mr and Mrs Dursley got out of bed on the Dreek Great Tuesday, her story starts. There was nothing about the drumly lift outside to let on the uncle weird things would soon be happening all over the country. Mr Dursley chanted to himself as he well do his maist drich grey tie for work, and Mrs Dursley gabbed awa blithely as she warsled a skirlin Dursley into his high chair. None of them catch it sick to a muckle Jenny hoolet flitcherin <laughs> fucking what? Flitcherin past the window. At half past eight, Mr Dursley lifted his briefcase, gave Mrs Dursley a wee kiss on the cheek, and the racks doon to gie Dudley a kiss, but couldn't they, because Dudley was now gone his dinger and placed her in the was wee cereal. Wait a wee roogie! <laughs> Locked Mr Dursley as he left the house. He got into his car and backed out to number four's <laughs> drink. <laughs> Fucking hell. It was on the corner of the street that he got the first glisk that something was near it. A bothering to read in a map. For a second, Mr Dursley didn't attack in what he'd seen. Then he juked his head around and hid another kick. <laughs> there was a tabby cat stodden on the corner of Privet Lone, but there wasn't a map in sight. What was wrong with him? Maybe it was a plisky o' the licht. <laughs> Mr Dursley blinked and glowered at the bodrons. It glowered back. As Mr Dursley drove around the corner and up the road, he watched the bodrons in the mirror. It was now reading the sign that said Privet Loan. No, keeking at the sign just, bodrons couldn't they read maps or signs. Mr Dursley gave himself a shack and put the bodrons out of his head. As he drove to the tune, he thought to own Nathan a pert by a muckle order of drills he was hoping to get today. But on the edge of the tune, drills were hunted to his mind by something else. As he waited in the usual morning traffic jam, he couldn't help noticing that there seemed to be a wee of folk gone about the bucket up in Uncle Clay's, folk in cloaks. Mr Dursley couldn't throw folk that wore Uncle Clay's. <laughs> the things you saw in young folk nowadays. He loose this was some glaikit new fashion. <laughs> Love the word glaikit. He drilled his fingers on the steering wheel and he glared at a buraco Egypt. <laughs> Stodden no far away. They were whispering together, all excited. Mr. Dursley was scunnered to see that ain or twa of them were they all that young themselves. Here, that money there had to be older than he was, and we're in an emer emerald green cloak and all. The cheek of it. But then it struck Mr Dursley that this was probably just one of the stupid carry-ons. Obviously their folk were out collecting for charity. Aye, that would be it. The traffic moved on and after a ween mean a ween minute, <laughs> Mr Dursley drove into the park near Grunnings, thinking only about drills. Mr Dursley I sat ways back to the window in his office, on the ninth flare. If he hadn't, he micked a Found it a bitty hard day to think only about drills that morning. And that's all I have. This has been story time with Teresa, where Teresa can't read it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's Scots language. Pronounced very badly. <laughs> because a lot of the thing with Scots language and how you may have seen Scots type on Twitter, like Scottish Twitter, and just how we all type, we type how. We type phonetically how things sound, and not all of what this said was typed how the words that I already know sound to me. So some of it I'm trying to make up and just read how it sounds, and the rest of it I already know, so I'm reading it how I would say it, and it's just mixing together into this 
mess that's probably not even recognisable as Scots, but it was fun. And that is what matters. So, yes. Um, if you're interested in another part or any specific scenes, let me know. I think if I was doing this, I would only be buying the first book and then reading some of the iconic scenes from it. I'm not gonna read the entire book <laughs> because you can buy the book and do that yourself. Um, ooh, I wonder if there's an audiobook. I could finally learn how to speak Scots. But yes, that has been. Teresa very poorly reads the Scottish edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Thank you for watching!